Okay, we're on. All right, good evening. Welcome to the New Market Planning Board meeting of January 23rd. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, Janet Roser is not here tonight, so Mikhail will be acting as a member tonight. Um, first on the agenda is public comments. Any public comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public comment section. Next is review and approval of the minutes of December 12th. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes of December 12th. Is there a second? appreciate you moving me up on the agenda. I know you guys have a few things on there, so I'll keep my comments fairly brief. Um, this is more or less just to give you an update on, on where we are with the, with the update. Um, so I was here, I think, in July, but just as a refresher, um, New Market last updated their stormwater regs in 2010, and that was prior to the um, Southeast Watershed Alliance model regulations that were put together in 2012. Since then, they've been working on updating that model uh, last year and, and into this year. Um, there's new precipitation rates. They, oof, they updated their redevelopment and they had some changes in impervious coverage. So those were the big ticket items that they addressed um, in that update. So where we got started, uh, in 2016 we were given the opportunity to apply for a project to special merit grant. Um, those grants are only available to coastal zone management areas. Um, so we, uh, along with Rockingham Planning Commission, uh, University of New Hampshire, Great Bay Reserve, um, we all sent in an application together. There were a number of different pieces to that. It was called the Setting Sail Project. Um, and as part of that application, we were able to have some funding that we could set aside for technical assistance for our five coastal communities. So um, we did a master plan in uh, Chapter 4 Dover. Uh, we did a grant application for Rollinsford. We did an emergency management workshop for Madbury. Durham were working on a floodplain ordinance. and. Um, New Market decided that they wanted to look at their stormwater regs. So um, we guaranteed that it was going to be at least $6,000 worth of technical assistance, but because of the way that the money shifted uh, around, a uh, few communities didn't need that much, so New Market actually ended up with 8000 which was good for us because we met quite a few times to do it. So 
Um, Well, I don't need that. Yeah. I'm just going to go through it. It's, yeah, it's no. not even advancing here. Yeah, just proceed. Yeah, I mean, it, that's fine. So basically, our project partners was myself at SRPC. Um, we had the New Market Planning Department, and we also had UNH Stormwater Center. Those were the, the three pieces. So um, we put together a subcommittee, the, the membership of that subcommittee. Uh, there was a conservation commission member, which was Patrick Reynolds, uh, the, a town council member, Gretchen Cast, Cast? Um, Diane Hardy, the town planner, Ben Dreyer, who is uh, the staff member for Underwood Engineers, and Peter Nelson for the representing the planning board. So that was the committee that's been that's been working on this. Uh, we met six times. We started in August of, of last year, and we held our last meeting in December. Um, at each one of those meetings, we worked our way through every component of the model ordinance, decided what was going to stay, what needed to be tailored, uh, what was going to get taken out, and what was going to carry over from your existing regulations um, and carry that over to the new update. So to give you an update of where we are, th we've organized all of the recommended, uh, recommendations. All the revisions are complete. It's been reviewed by the subcommittee. It's also been reviewed by the, the town, inter, uh, town attorney. Um, his comments have also been incorporated into the, uh, the final draft as it stands now. Right now, the town is considering uh, to offer the opportunity for those draft regulations to be peer reviewed by either a developer or an outside engineer or a combination of both. I don't know, Diane, if you want to give an update on that, if, if that's moving forward or. Which in the RPC, the Planning Commission is, is on board with that as well, to get an outside developer's perspective. Um, especially because this is, the, this is gonna be the first community to adopt the new model. Any feedback we get, we can pass that along to the authors of the, the model to make sure that they think about that moving forward. Um, so we're gonna have an opportunity on February 13th to really dive into the changes. Um, at that meeting, I think it, we're going to have a workshop where Jamie Houle will be here from the Stormwater Center to, he was one of the primary authors of the, the new update and the original 2010 regulations. He'll be here to sort of go over in more detail why they made certain changes and you can ask questions. And then I'll follow that up with a more detailed uh, presentation on the, the, you know, the substantial changes that we made. Just to highlight a few of them, Um, we added additional definitions um, that were carried over from, that were in the model, uh, that weren't in your, your existing regs. Um, we changed some of the minimum thresholds for site plan uh, review. So to give you an example, your 2010 regulations, it was uh, the projects that were getting captured under that um, were projects that disturbed any more than 20,000 square feet. Um, what we're recommending is that comes down to 5,000 square feet. and or more than 2,500 square feet within 100 feet of a surface water. So that is a substantial change going from 20,000 to 5,000. Um, one of the primary reasons behind that, and I'm sure Jamie will talk about that, what they, they did an analysis in Durham where they looked at all new construction for I think seven years and 
um, they what they looked at is trigger points or the trigger threshold so um, that 5,000 square feet captured about 80% of projects um, and I think the 20,000 square feet was something like um, 50 or 60 percent of projects. So the more projects you're getting under this review, the better your stormwater management is going to be. So that was why they chose that 5,000 threshold. Um, there's a, other substantial changes. There's all new um, stormwater management for redevelopment. Um, that was one of the pieces in your existing that there wasn't a whole lot there. Um, it also allows for mitigation for redevelopment, which is new. So if it you know, the maximum extent possible in terms of capturing something on site. If it's just not feasible, this options for mitigation allows for off-site mitigation. So it allows for a developer to get creative and moving their stormwater around. So if, if the site is difficult, there's some options also connecting to the municipal system. So there's a few different things in there to allow for some flexibility. Um, submission requirements, general performance criteria. There's a spill prevention and control and response plan. That's only for site plan only. Um, and then the other big ones are looking at your site inspections, um, your maintenance and reporting responsibilities. So that's going to be a requirement anyway, um, but now this is sort of moving it onto the, the developer to get you that information so you're, you're keeping track of that, um, all of the different uh, maintenance and inspection schedules. Um, so the next steps, I mentioned that the workshop is going to be on February 13th. That's going to be with the Stormwater Center and uh, the Planning Commission. After that, uh, we'll hold a public hearing and then final adoption. So the public hearing, we won't do that until we receive feedback from the developers and decide what's going to be incorporated into that. But um, at this point, the, the regulations are as final as they're going to be until we get comments back from, um, from the developers. So we're hoping that we'll get that feedback sometime in February and then move on to the public hearing process and then final adoption. Um, our grant is over um, March 31st. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you as a planning board have to adopt it by that time. Um, what, we what we wrote into the grant was that a final draft would be in front of you at that point. But we're hoping that at you know, by the end of March, you'll be almost ready to, to adopt it. But you, there's no requirement from the grant, so there's no, there's nothing like that. Um, and that's it. Any questions? Yeah, and I would say, you know, to come prepared to that January 13th for questions for Jamie or myself. February 13th. February 13th, right. sorry. Um, as he's the, you know, one of the primary authors, he's going to know a lot about why they chose to use certain numbers. So if you have certain questions about why things are there, we can definitely discuss that. And Diane, you're going to have peer review on it before the February 13th? Meeting? I don't know if we'll be able to get the the peer review comments by the 13th, hopefully we can. So I you guess might have to wait to March or it, actually April for a right. public hearing right. because... Let's, let's you know. see if we can, okay. yeah. I mean, we're asking them to do us yeah. a favor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We could have a I public hearing. I think that'd be important to hear from, as you're setting up, I agree 100% with um, the engineering side, 
but also the developer side because they're going to see this in two different lights. Yeah, right. yeah. The engineer is really going to see right. it from the engineer perspective. The developer is going to be looking at it from a cost perspective and yeah. impact. Because if you have the public hearing and then the, the developers get together and they dramatically change it, then we have to have another public hearing if it's right. changed right. so much. So. Yeah, I mean, but well, let's face it, they can make, people can make recommendations. It's ultimately our decision. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. so. well, I think before I would want to make a decision, I would want that input. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll do All our right. best to get Very some good. comments by the 13th. Okay. I'm just saying that's a little bit of a yeah. short yeah. time frame yeah. for, yeah. for people. So. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kyle. Thank, Thank you, Kyle. Take care. Good night. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Um, before we start the next section, um, has everybody seen the memo from John Radigan, the town's attorney, relative to um, the ADU and um, potential change, recommend, recommended change if we want to undertake that um, at, at part of our regulations, part of the zoning. Um, so I know, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith? Jack Dion. Oh, Jack Dion, I'm sorry, um, is here tonight for that. But just be patient for a little bit, if you would. Um, what's everybody's take on, basically, um, John Radigan um, shared the concerns that Val had with us trying to, you know, offer up that applicants could make restrictions on their property, didn't think that was very practical, and pr probably not legal also. Um, so that's one point. <clears throat> the other point is um, a recommended change to the zoning, which basically says the planning board may waive impact fees where it finds that a proposed accessory dwelling unit will not increase the number of existing bedrooms in the property and where it finds that one or more of the existing bedrooms on the property will be dedicated to the ADU use. So. The first, the question I have is, um, is the, I, or as a board, are we, do we want to undertake trying to make this change, have a public hearing, make a change to the zoning and make a recommendation to the council to adopt that, or how do we want to approach this? So, Rosie, go ahead. I'm, I'm not in favor of changing it um, and giving the, uh, the waivers out inside. Attorney Radigan stated, over time, the number of such waivers could grow substantially, and with such growth would come the burden of a substantial number of mistakes. What? Ready yet? It sounded like it was from that microphone. We should probably turn that off. I'll turn it off. I mean, we just, we don't have the manpower or the personnel to carry that out. So I think it would just be a, a burden on the community. He was referring to deed right. restrictions because that was what was right. discussed, it, discussed excuse me, at the last meeting. That um, he, his comment was pertaining to that approach, having deed restrictions that the town would then have to administer. So he suggested this language so that it gives the planning board another option for granting waivers in situations where there isn't an increase in the number of bedrooms as a result of the accessory apartment. That's what he was referring to when he was talking about the burden of administrative um, compliance. I, I, I thought finally providing a waiver based on age would impose upon the town the ADU dwellings. We're not talking yeah, about separate age. Issues. Okay. Separate issues. We're not okay. talking okay. about any age right. restrictions at this point. I, what his recommendation is we do not allow any waiver Wait, based on age restriction because right. we can't enforce it. We, it's right. it's right. not technically yeah. legal. Exactly. So we don't want to yeah. go down that way. But what he suggested was there's another <coughs> another avenue if the planning board so chooses that an opportunity to grant a waiver may be a situation where, say they're taking a three-bedroom house and making it a two-bedroom house with a one-bedroom ADU. You're not adding any bedrooms. 
that's, that's a, what that's drives a different the impact situation. And that's what drives the, the impact on the schools and on schools water and, and sewer systems. Additional bedrooms. And this was his recommendation. Right. That this language. That was an option. Right. Val, right. go ahead. So. so I think if we do go that route with a, um, um, the, a proposal to amend our current ordinance, I think that we should also be careful, because I'm in agreement with it, as long as the number of bedrooms are not being ex expanded. You're converting one bedroom to another. But I think we would want language in here that if you had a studio apartment, which wouldn't qualify as another bedroom, right, that, that somehow that doesn't exempt you, but that a studio would also have to qualify as a bedroom. Correct. So that you're, no, yeah. you're not taking yes. a three bedroom yeah. and then say you just have a studio apartment over the garage. Now, in fact, you really have created this fourth bedroom. So do we want to add a clarifying well, I just think at some point effect? it should be. It would be a definition of what is considered a bedroom. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, because a studio is not considered having a bedroom, right? You have studios, yeah. one bedrooms, two bedrooms. People sleep in them. No, but under right, a definition, it's not considered right. having a bedroom. Mm -hmm. it's, right. a, it's a separate definition. Right. So we would have to have a workshop on this. Then. Unless somebody can. I don't think you need a workshop. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody wants to suggest some language tonight. Well, I think it would be nice board. to get a consensus to whether or not it's something the board would support right. amending the ordinance. And then, if there's enough votes for that, you know, what would be the language of the amendment? Right, and then we'll work through that. Right. So, so we'll just pull Jane. On? Jane, what are your thoughts? I think what I struggle with is to your point that we, when, when you talk about studio and what is the definition of a bedroom, right? I mean, Diane, I get it. <laughs> Everyone kind of knows what it is, but. A lot of people would sit there and say a little corner could be classified as a bit. Well, we could put in language that a studio apartment for purposes of this section is considered one bedroom. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it yeah. simple. Yeah, but I think, yeah. I think that's my right. point. Yeah. Right. But if, I think I mean, we have to be clear, though. Right. No, I agree you yeah. need to make it clear. Yeah. But I mean, a, a very direct statement to that effect, mm -hmm. I think, does the trick, personally. And again, just trying to circumvent uh, an applicant trying to come before us where they really are increasing potentially the, the use because they're they want to maintain the number of bedrooms they have and add right. Right. the additional ADU sleeping area. Right. 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 Now, now his letter, I just read that bottom thing, he said the ADU doesn't apply. ADU, according to <coughs> the accessory dwelling unit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think everyone's in agreement <laughs> with John's he's, letter. He's saying that it would be a burden for the town. For, this is for age, just trying age restricted, to trying to restricted come up with some method. Yeah. Yeah. If you're creating a waiver to anybody, saying that, and this was my argument during the workshop that we had, when the, when the state changed the RSA to to be by right for, for all those that are zoned within single family units. And, it, and I stated then that if we, once we did this, we would not be able to give waivers for children, but for the school. And you were all in agreement with me. And in this, this, you know, we we don't have the, the manpower to do this. This is going to be a burden. We're not going to do that. that. We're not doing that. He's saying we're not have. He agrees that if we were to try to do something age restricted then somebody in the town would have to go out and inspect occasionally make sure it is age restricted. That's off the table. What he is saying is that that's untenable. You can't, he doesn't recommend we do that because it's unworkable and it's illegal. Right. 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 So, but what he is saying is that we may want to consider granting waivers in a situation where the number of bedrooms in the facility is not changing. In other words, if I have a three bedroom house and I make it a two bedroom house with a one bedroom ADU, you still have three bedrooms. In theory, there is no additional burden to the town at all. That, to me, is, an, a, reason, is a reasonable interpretation, a reasonable decision to be made to grant a waiver in that situation. That's all he's, that's what he's saying. If we are not legally able to restrict the age of occupants, hmm. okay, by us granting a waiver under the school portion, we are thereby expecting that they will not have any chil any children in those units. Therefore, we are 
indeed restricting the age. And, and you can go about it any way you want to say, well, if they're not increasing the bedroom, so now we've got to go inspect the property to make sure the fourth bedroom that's existing is the bedroom that's going to be used. Uh, no. Well, the building inspector is going to inspect it anyways during the construction of this. By granting the way, but we are indeed saying you cannot have uh, school-age no. children. No, we're not. No, we're not. No. Yes, you are. No. Because that, it's expected of the property owner that because we gave them the waiver that they will not have school-age children yet. That's not what we're not, saying. Not, not with the proposal. That's, that's we're the just problem. saying you can't, if you, you if right. the number of bedrooms at the end of the day is the same as it was when it was a single family house, then that requirement is legally defensible in, in his view after looking at the case law and the discussions back and forth. And I gave him all the minutes of the board, you know, from the, when the we had the discussion is that back and forth. The, from the legal perspective, as John is stating, the premise is that you're not expanding the um, you're not expanding the physical use of the property. If it's a three bedroom, it still remains a three bedroom. If it's a four bedroom, it still remains a four bedroom. So you're not you're not expanding the, the existing use of the property. Right, you're not. You're is not the exposing. premise of the ability to grant the waiver if our ordinance allowed it? Right now, our ordinance does not allow it. We're not exposing the town to, in any instance, any additional bedrooms. So there won't be an increase to for, the, uh, for the service. waiver. Right. No, no new net bedrooms I'm comfortable with. Right. Right. For waivers. Yeah. For waivers. And he you said You still don't have to give the waiver. No, waiver, right. 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 You, know. right. You, can, you don't have to give the waiver. Right. Right. You can consider it. You still it. have the... But you have the option to, no. and let's face it, the, the direction of the law is accessory dwelling units are coming, you know, we just went through that whole thing about how important that is and it's now written into the law, so they're coming anyway. We're trying to find one example where we can have the ability to offer a waiver in cases where there are no new net bedrooms. Simple. It has nothing to do with age. Well, I'm sure when the taxes go up next cycle, to Three, at least three dollars a thousand on all the homes in Newmarket, and we start waiving close to three thousand dollars on all these ADUs that are now legally able to, to be done. What? It's an. It's not a guaranteed waiver. Well, if you if you give a guaranteed waiver to one person, you're going to have to give it to the. You can't. Each case is each case, each case is, is individual. Yeah, but but if each case. Is has say for I'm just using four bedrooms and they're using the fourth bedroom and it's not you have to give it to everyone who does that, and I mean with it being a right to have an ADU now. No, you're opening up a can of worms. I do not recommend it at all. We you know where Rosie stands, Jane. Mm -hmm. I don't see why you can't do it, Amy. I I don't see why you can't. For this specific instance. For this specific instance, doesn't yeah. change. Yeah, I would be in favor of amending this as long as it wasn't an, 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 uh, an increase in what I call density. Right? Bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Bedrooms. Mikhail? I just wanted to make sure when we're talking about impact fees, are we talking about school impact fee as well? Yes. We are. There's four different yes. impact fees, recreation, schools, water, and so on. Okay, so um, when we're talking about waiving impact fees, we are talking about it in this article number seven, we are talking about fees including the school impact fees. That's correct. It could be, whatever, the, could whatever, be. whatever they, they ask, ask for. for. Okay, so I think in this case, it, you know, like we have four different situations. Um, and I think this generally says that it's a suggestion. It's not really, it's something that the board can do, but doesn't have to do because it says may. Correct. So um, as a suggestion, I think that, you know, apart from other suggestions that are already here from two to six, I think it would be useful to have it there. I don't think it changes anything because we still have to decide if we waive it or not. Um, so yeah, the suggestion, why not? I'll Peter, thank you. Okay, and, and I'm in favor of that. So, do we, as a board, want to set up a 
Well, I actually had a, already had a suggested amendment to, to this language, right? If we want to try to work through that tonight and have a public hearing <clears throat> in March, or do we want to, between now and March, work with that, come back to the, um, come back to the February meeting with suggestions, recommendations, and be prepared to come up with a final? Why don't I'd we do like that? I don't want to yeah. rush it. Just no, I agree. I agree. You want to do that so we come to the February meeting prepared any, if you have any suggested um, revisions? Um, I would s like to see everybody get them to the planning department, you know, a week before the meeting or something. So mm -hmm. it'd be so good if they're all compiled so everybody, they can be distributed so everybody can think about and we can discuss them semi-intelligently. And then if we can come to a consensus on some language, then we could schedule a public hearing and see what the public input is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Then we'll put this on the agenda for for work session, work session. for February, February 13th. Yep. Yep. And if everybody could get their comments a week before me, and I'll yep. compile them and get them out to everybody. Yep. yep. That'd be great. Thank you. So, sir, I know you sat here, you sat there patiently, and uh, you know, obviously, you heard the discussion. Um, based on our lawyers' input, we're not in a position at this point to grant waivers. Um, so uh, obviously it's up to you, but I would recommend just continuing your application until such time as we have more definitive language and updates. Or if we're going to update, there'll be a defin more definitive answer where we can make a decision. But obviously I, I leave that up to you. Um, if, if you need us to take a vote or want us to take a vote, we certainly can, can take a vote. Um, you would like us to vote tonight? Okay. Um, if we voted tonight under what John said, it would have to be a win. We can't. We, we can't approve one in October. Right. We approved one in October. Right. We've, we've yeah, excuse me. Steve, come up here, yeah, please. Sorry. Yes. There was one approved in October, 50% larger than, than what I have. Yes. So. We have new, impact, new input from the town's attorney. Right. So. It was also said by him that you do have the authority to waive impact. Yes. If we amend the ordinance, Certain. we In would have to make an amendment to the ordinance first, which is what we they plan on looking into between now and the next meeting, to make that amendment to the ordinance so that we could then therefore give waivers. But it hasn't been done in the past, correct? We we were I, right. I well, be, because because. Things weren't done in the past doesn't mean that's the way we're going to continue to do things in the well, future. That. You know, that, so um, the the playing field has changed, and we've gotten some the some state input the law. since well, the state changed the law and, and the state changed the law in June. Right, and but issues came up, and we got some advice from the attorney, which I think has certainly mm -hmm. changed my opinion on granting waivers. And I don't want to speak for the rest of the board, but um, I think I was supposed to be told that there were waive, waivers, uh, not waivers, but impact fees to come. When I applied for the building permit, I didn't find out till October when I was trying to get my occupancy permit. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to that as a planning board. That's a procedure in July when I applied for the permit. Yeah, understood. Understood. It's mm -hmm. it's not a great position for you to be in. I, like I said, we can vote tonight. I'm not so sure you'll like the outcome if you force a vote tonight. Um, but if you want us to vote tonight, we will vote. I think he's better off getting. Oh, that's what I'm. Yeah, I would so I'm saying, but yeah. yes. give us a uh, chance to work through it. We'll give you a chance of getting it. Because if not, he would have to apply all over again, right? To come back. Because it's a hearing. Right. For, for another hearing, so it would end up being right. more work. For so we would continue, and then we wouldn't have to go back and re-notify all the abutters and start yeah. the process over. Yeah. So I personally think it would be in your best interest to. Yeah hold off until we can get something on the books and then the board can vote. Because under attorney's yeah. advice tonight we'd have to vote no. We'd have to vote no. And you'd have to go through that whole thing all over again. Can I, can I ask a question? Um, so I'm assuming you can't get your occupancy permit until the impact fees are paid. Is that right. correct? Right. right. Can, an a can an applicant in this process pay the impact fee and then appeal it to rebate it? What the applicant can do is um, request a temporary C of O until such time as the ordinance is <coughs> acted upon. 
and then at that point a permanent could be issued with the understanding that any payments would be made that weren't approved by the planning board. We've, we've done temporary CFOs and we could do that for like a 90 day period and that's that pretty sense. common. We did that with the mill project actually. That actually makes sense. Yeah. Is that reasonable? Is that, so did, um, Diane would you um, Talk, talk to, Mike to Mike in the Hoffman. morning so he's I'd aware of what's going on. So I think that's a, an appropriate approach. Absolutely. You know, that, that'll give you occupancy of it and it'll give the, us the, uh, the time to amend what we think we want to amend and may help you in the future. Right. No guarantees, but it'll give you an opportunity. So I mean, because otherwise if we vote it right. down tonight, you're going to have to pay the fee to get the occupancy permit to anyway. So this at least gives you the opportunity if we continue the hearing, if we do vote and get approval to um, amend, then we can hear the case and determine whether or not we can waive it. All right. All right. So that would make sense. I think it's just Sounds trying good. to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you for your patience. All right. All right. Thank you, Jack. All right. Good night. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sort of caught up in the middle of a change in policy. I know. And it's yeah, really I'm trying to think of something that's fair. I think that is a good solution to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. We have another change. I don't know if Sue, um, is it on the agenda? If you recall, last January we had several uh, subdivisions, well, we had several zoning and subdivision uh, changes when we were doing the sign ordinance. And one of them was we uh, changed the subdivision and the site review regulations to reflect that applicants have to get the materials in to us 21 days in advance of the meeting instead of 15 days. Yeah, we have that the end of the agenda. Okay. I didn't have it on mine. So I just wanted to say that Sue has, has worked up some language and um, you know, the planning board can go ahead and waive its own, not waive, amend its <laughs> Rules of procedure I without a public hearing. We voted on it, but we didn't change our rules of procedure. I see. We okay. changed our site review and our subject. Gotcha. Yeah. But this is another step in the process. Okay. So. Okay. So, um, Diane, for the sake of expediency, yes. um, the four items we had on our agenda are all going to be continued, right? We yes. all have requests for continuances. Yes. So I'm going to just read through them and yes, we'll take them as one. Yeah. Vote one, through them as one. Yep. Yep. Um, so the first one is Johnson Smith and Caitlin Smith continuation of request for a waiver of impact fees for an accessory apartment at 14 Woods Drive. Second item is Alex Capron and Kathleen West continuation of a request for a waiver of school impact fees for an accessory apartment at 7 Moody Point Drive. Next is NIP Lot 6, LLC, and Maplewood and Vaughn Holding Company, LLC, continuation of a public hearing for an application for a lot line adjustment at 2 Forbes, 175 and 177 Exeter Road, um, tax map R3, Lot 6, 7, and 9-6 in the B2 zone. And then the last one is Maplewood and Vaughn Holding Company, LLC, continuation of a public hearing for an application for site plan review at 177 Exeter Road, tax map R3, Lot 7 in the B2 zone. So all of those hearings um, have requested continuances, so I right. entertain a motion. I make a motion to continue the three just mentioned. Four. 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 Four just mentioned applicants to our February 13th meeting. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, Next on the agenda is um, okay. what Diane was just talking about, rules of procedure, amendment to planning board rules of procedure, application submission section. This amendment is to change the application submission filing dead date to 21 days prior to meeting from 15 <coughs> days to reflect the recent changes to New Hampshire RSA 676 <coughs> colon 4 IB. So we need a motion to make the amendment to our rules. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. It passes. So on to new and old business. Does anybody have any 
new business or old business they want to discuss? Hearing none on two. <coughs> Um, zoning committee. You gonna give uh, us a quick update on that? Diane? Just that we had a meeting last evening with uh, representatives of the town council and um, Mr. Levy of the economic development committee. Uh, Valerie attended, as did Roseanne and myself and Steve Fournier, and we talked about uh, the status, if you will, of the zoning amendment that. The committee started last January and we had a public hearing on and we had some feedback from, from the landowners regarding that. And of course the planning board decided to uh, focus on getting the first uh, step completed before we moved on to the second area. And of course the um, new skill nursing facility was approved in October. So um, at that meeting there were several questions raised about how this would be implemented, whether um, the zoning change would require extension of water and sewer utilities. We also talked about the um, <coughs> status of payments in lieu of taxes, if it's a nonprofit organization um, that had been raised as an issue in another community. And Steve Fournier um, is getting some legal advice from legal counsel on uh, the viability of that approach and what we can and can't do. And um, the committee is to reconvene and um, hopefully uh, we can move forward. This committee can move forward with scheduling a meeting with the landowners because I think we decided that uh, we'd like to make sure we understand where the landowners are coming from with respect or what their interests are. So we'll probably have a follow-up meeting in the next couple of weeks. We didn't really set a date, but that's my understanding and then we can schedule our meeting with the landowners probably in February and March and um, move it to the next step at that point. And hopefully we'll have a legal opinion <coughs> to work with. Sounds good. Okay, the only thing I want to add to that is the, the emphasis on um, we would really like to understand what the town council is looking for relative <coughs> to um, you know, development in the community what the what the council is looking to see there you know where they want it because they'll be in order to if they want low density development that's one thing or if they're looking for high density development it would need to be the commitment <coughs> of the town on bringing up the sewer line yeah that's gonna that's so always been an issue up there the, with the sewer it just doesn't make sense to, to have a committee keep spinning its wheels without knowing what, yeah. the, what the end goal is and the, to extend sewer out there, we have a preliminary cost mm -hmm. estimate from Underwood Engineers to, to the tune of $1.8 to $2 million. So Damn. it's an ex $1.8 to $2 million for sewer only. Mm -hmm. So it's a major investment. Mm -hmm. So um, going forward, we need to have some clarity as to uh, what the town's position is so that we are in a position yeah. to discuss and negotiate off-site improvements with any developer who might be interested in developing a and because the, uh, the thought of uh, bringing sewer up there is because that area is over the aquifer. Because <coughs> the Dufresne's Henry study from many, many years ago that they didn't even want excavation there, which, which has been there for several decades now, but to put all those septics out there over the aquifer is not a good idea. Even if it's for low density single family? Yeah, even low density single family. And, lawns and fertilizers and all those separate entities to make sure that they're <coughs> complying with what they should and should not be doing over an aquifer but you know it's you know what vision does the council have what do they look to do and what could we put there that would be economically advantageous to the <coughs> okay thank you yeah. chairman's report that's you i've got nothing other than it's a lousy day Drive careful. I guess, well, I guess you received the news that Cynthia Copeland is oh. um, resigning yeah. or retiring, Retire. I should say, mm -hmm. from Strack Regional Planning Commission, which will be a law. She's been with the commission for 18 years, wow. so she has a lot of institutional knowledge and has worked very hard in the region for many years. Well, well, and for the record, has done a lot for Newmarket. She's she resident here. She lives in Newmarket. She was one of the first residents yeah. of the. The right. mill was redeveloped. Right, so right. 
right? She kind of put her money where, yeah, where the vision was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just, so. I'm also on the executive <coughs> committee, so we're having the first search committee meeting this week. <laughs> Yeah, but, so but no, she got her service much appreciated. I think there'll job. be a lot of applicants. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Um, committee reports. Any committee reports? I'm on conservation, but we're just we're discussing just kiosks. And there's a few violations on some easement projects <coughs> that we're we're looking into and getting in touch with the landowners. Was, was there any update on the Heron Point access issue? Didn't that run through the Conservation Commission? They went to a meeting, and I'm not I'm not sure what the result was because I had missed. The, I went to this past meeting, and that wasn't discussed. But I was planning in conservation that that week. But there was I could I bring that information in for you at the next meeting. All right, yeah. Planners report. Did Did you get some information back from um, Steve Fournier on stormwater regulations? I'm talking to Amy, I'm sorry. On the stormwater regulations? The MS4 program in the lawsuit? Um, he was going to a meeting, but he he said he would, if there was another update, that he would let us okay. know of what he can. Where it is. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if anyone has mentioned um, the passing of Jack Fitzgibbons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Long time, uh, did a lot for the town. Yeah, he did. He did. Do you have anything, Diane? No, I want to say. Anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Don't forget Thank to you shut all. Don't forget to shut off your mic.